George is now walking slowly towards Mary Hatch's home. He is carrying a stick and is pondering as he whacks it against the picket fence and the mailbox. He walks past the house a few yards, turns, and starts back again. Mary comes over to open the upstairs window, and she is watching George walk back and forth. What are you doing? Picketing? Hello, Mary. I just happened to be passing by. Yeah, so I noticed. Have you made up your mind? How's that? Have you made up your mind? About what? About coming in. Your mother just phoned and said you were on your way over to pay me a visit. My mother just called you? Well, how did she know? Didn't you tell her? I didn't tell anybody. I just went for a walk and happened to be passing by. That's... What, what do you... Mary has disappeared from the window and is heading downstairs. Just went for a walk. That's all. I'll be downstairs, Mother. All right, dude. Mary looks in a mirror at the bottom of the stairs and fixes her hair. She is plainly excited at George's visit. She runs into the parlor and puts a sketch on an easel. The sketch is a caricature of George throwing a lasso around the moon with lettering that says, George lassos the moon. Then Mary runs into the hall and opens the phonograph. Well, are you coming in or aren't you? Well, I'll come in for a minute. But yeah, I... George is struggling with the gate. He finally kicks it open and slowly walks up the path toward Mary. I didn't tell anybody I was coming over here, you know. When'd you get back? Tuesday. Did you get that dress? Do you like it? George looks down a little suspiciously at the phonograph. Well, I thought you'd go back to New York like Sam and Angie and the rest of them. Oh, well, I worked there a couple of vacations, but I don't know. I guess I was homesick. Homesick? For Bedford Falls? Yes. M my family and oh, everything. Would you like to sit down? All right, for a minute. I, I still can't understand it, though. You know, I didn't tell anybody I was coming over here. Well, would you rather leave? No, I don't want to be rude. Well, then, sit down. What's that? George sees the cartoon on the easel and bends down for a close look at it. Some joke, huh? Well, I still see it smells like pine needles in here. Thank you. And dance, bud. What's the matter? Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. Well, I... Uh, nice about your brother Harry and Ruth, wasn't it? Oh, yeah. Don't you like her? Well, of course I like her. She's a peach. Oh, just marriage in general you're not enthusiastic about, huh? No, marriage is all right for Harry and Marty and Sam and you. Mitty? Mitty? Who's down there with you? It's George Bailey, Mother. George Bailey? What's he want? Well, I don't know. What do you want? Me? Not a thing. I just came in to get warm. 
He's making violent love to me, Mother. You tell him to go right back home. And don't you leave the house either. Sam Wainwright promised to call you from New York tonight. Hey, what's your mother? I mean, you know, I didn't come here to... What did you come here for then? I don't know. You tell me. You're supposed to be the one that has all the answers. You tell me. Why don't you go home? That's where I'm going. I don't know why I came here in the first place. Good night. Good night. Maddie, Maddie, the telephone. It's on. I'll get it. Whatever. Were you doing that you couldn't I forgot my hat. Hee-haw. Hello, Sam. How are you? Oh, great. It's good to hear your voice again. Oh, well, that's awfully sweet of you, Sam. George has been listening while grabbing his hat, but now heads dejectedly back towards the front door. There's an old friend of yours here, George Bailey. You mean old Mossback George? Yes, old Mossback George. Put him on. Well, just a minute. I'll call him. George! He doesn't want to speak to George, you idiot. He does so. He asked for him. George! George, Sam wants to speak to you. Mrs. Hatch gives George a nasty look and runs back up the stairs. Hi, Sam. Sam is seated at his desk in a tux with the downtown New York City nightlife outside his high-rise window. He is holding hands with a lady standing behind his chair, and she is dressed in a mink stole and is holding a cocktail in her hand. Well, George Bailiofsky! Hey, a fine pal you are. What are you trying to do? Steal my girl? What, what, what do you mean? Nobody's trying to steal anybody's girl. Here, here here's Mary. Here. To both of you. Tell Mary to get on the Here, your talk time. Mary senses George's feelings and tries to hold back her tears. Mother's on the extension. We can... I am not! We can both hear. Come here. Mary takes the telephone from George and holds it so that out of necessity, George's cheek is almost against hers. He is very conscious of her proximity. We're listening, Sam. Well, look, I have a big deal coming up that's going to make us all rich. George, do you remember that night in Martini's bar when you told me that you uh, read some place about making plastics out of soybeans? Shut up, will you? You remember out of, chili out of soybeans. Uh, uh, huh? Uh, yeah, 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 uh, soybeans, yeah. Dad snapped up the idea, and he's going to build a factory outside of Rochester. How do you like that? Mary is feeling George's closeness, and he is very conscious of her being so close to him. Uh, Rochester? Uh, why Rochester? Why not? Can you think of anything better? Well, I don't know. Uh, why not right here? Uh, you remember that old uh, tool and machinery works? Well, you, you tell your father he can get that for a song and all the labor he wants, too. Uh, half the town was thrown out of work when they closed down. Is that so? Well, I'll tell him. Hey, that sounds great. Ah, oh, baby, I knew you'd come through. Now, here's the point. Mary, Mary, you're in on this, too. Now, listen. Uh, money? Yeah, well, a little. Well, now listen. I want you to put every cent you've got into our stock, do you hear? George, I may have a job for you. That is, unless you're still married to that broken down building and loan. <laughs> well, this is the biggest thing since radio, and I'm letting you in on the ground floor. Oh, Mary. Mary. Well, I, I, I'm here. 
chance of a lifetime? Do you hear? The chance of a lifetime! As Mary listens, she begins to look up at George, her lips almost on his lips. He says it's the chance of a lifetime. Now you listen to me. I don't want any plastics, and I don't want any ground floors, and I don't want to get married ever to anyone. Do you understand that? I want to do what I want to do. And you're... And you're... Oh, Mary. Oh, Josh, Josh. Mary. Oh, Josh. Oh, Mary. Mrs. Hatch is at the top of the stairs. Oh, she practically faints at what she sees and runs back to her room. <laughs>